we're now going to get Hilary Oxley on and Hilary is uh, Oxley is 68 a uh, pa pakeha which is white middle class grassroots lesbian activist political inequalities are imbued within our everyday lives Hillary is a male exclusionary lesbian feminist, came out at 20 in the mid-70s when gay liberation had just started in New Zealand in NZ. Older lesbians were still closeted-ish, partying, yet exhilarated to protest with women, yelling lesbian out loud, and feminism was debated. And Hillary's From Lava, lesbian action from vi for visibility in AOTRO. Uh, I can't pronounce, I've done brilliantly but you'll pronounce it better and um you're going to tell us about being excluded from the fair that lava helped set up and thank you so much for being here because it's the middle of your night so yeah. over to you hillary and welcome yes it's lava which is lesbian action for visibility in aotearoa which is new zealand and um i can tell you a little bit about lava we're lesbians we are same sex attracted we're not same gender attracted of course, and sex and gender are different. We're concerned about young lesbians who seem to be facing pressure to transition because of their gender non-conformity and because of being attracted to females. And um, we would like to also enjoy women-only services and lesbian-only spaces, as well as being included in the diverse rainbow communities decision making but that's not going to happen but you know we'd like to as we used to be able to help with and our the new zealand human rights act protects lesbians rights specifically um, but the human rights commission is undermining those rights which is a large part of the problem for us at the moment so um, in um, 1980, um, we had a Lesbian Liberation Week in Wellington, the capital of um, this country, the capital city. And also in 1980, the National Gay Rights Coalition asked to be included in protection laws. But the Human Rights Commissioner at the time suggested to the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister that lesbians should be included in the illegal sex, like the guys. And he also told the media that some groups deserve to be discriminated against. So lesbians, gay men and bisexuals campaigned together. And that was when, you know, campaign, campaigning, of course, was not online. It was um, making phone calls, writing letters, turning up at meetings, it just hundreds of letters and all sorts of meetings were attended, including the Theosophical Society and all sorts of things. And that led to, in 1986, homosexual law reform. <clears throat> Excuse me. It came into law to decriminal decriminalise gay men. But the second part of that campaign to get legal protection under the Human Rights Act against discrimination for lesbian and gay men didn't happen. So in uh, 1988, LAVA formed, and we wanted lesbians to be visible in the human rights legislation that the government was about to introduce. So LAVA was named Lesbian Action for Visibility in Aotearoa. Lava lobbied for the word lesbian to be included in the Human Rights Bill rather than just homosexual. So now our bill says sexual orientation specifies heterosexuals, homosexuals, lesbians, bisexuals are all protected in our, and mentioned in our human rights law. So once again, New Zealand was the first in the world. Women won the vote in 1893. And that was on September the 19th, two days ago. And, um, but, but we had problems of men wanting to invade our lesbian spaces already back in that time. So before telling you um, more about our situation here in New Zealand, 
You need to remember that lesbians are exclusively same-sex attracted. We fancy women, and we're not interested in sex of men. Unfortunately, the category lesbian is the most popular one for het men when they're watching porn. So that's quite useful to remind people of that. We don't want men satisfying their fetish by being in our lesbian company. And that includes the het men who think they're women who are attracted to women. We're not into satisfying men's sexuality. And there have been men who have tried to join our lesbian spaces, of course. In 1974, in club at Club 41 in Wellington, um, that was the first lesbian club in Wellington. It had trouble with a young guy. Uh, I don't know what he called himself then, but he was a trans-identified male, I suppose. Uh, we were kind to him, but said no. Those uh, That club was in premises that were leased from Carmen Urupe, who was a well-known transsexual. He was a businessman, a drag performer, a brothel keeper. He stood for the more the mayor in Wellington in 1977. He ran coffee bars and strip clubs. And these strip clubs had mainly gay transvestites performing, dancing and so forth, and heterosexual family men in dresses serving the drinks. And these men also were sort of were good at looking out for the safety of lesbians who turned up there because um, lesbians used to go after the private gay club had closed. So um, there was interactions. Lesbians helped out on occasion by turning up to be the audience in the day daytime when uh, a ship was in port and they needed, you know, they were sailors were going to turn up at the club, so lesbians would go along and be the audience. So we mixed together and helped each other out. The next 20 years, that's the 80s and 90s, was fun, politically active for women and homosexuals, with um, lesbians together with and separate from gay pride and trannies at times, but not particularly in conflict. We still mixed together in, night, in nightlife city spots and annually at the lesbian and gay fairs. In 1994, Lava had trouble with a lesbian newsletter in Christchurch in the South Island. There was a man who wanted to start a lesbian support group and he wanted to advertise it in the Christchurch lesbian newsletter. That split the community rather. So um, we contacted the Human Rights Commission who said no initially and that he couldn't. And then um, he complained again, so um, they, the Human Rights Commission said yes, that he was allowed to do it, and then we complained again, and then they said that they can't decide. So since then, in the last 30 years, there's been no consultation between the Human Rights Commission and LAVA, and that's ongoing. In 2002, there was a lesbian support, another lesbian support group that was initiated by lesbians and refused access to a man who wanted to join. Um, he had had the okay to join from a lesbian who was a lecturer at the women's studies or would have been gender studies by then at the local university. But anyway, we said he couldn't. And later he became the lesbian representative for the region on ILGA, the um, International Lesbian and Gay Association, which was infuriating. In 2013, the same-sex marriage was introduced in the country. And in 2018, some younger feminists, inspired by the Lesbian Rights Alliance and Get the L Out in the UK, thank you, held a banner at the front of the Pride Parade in Auckland behind the dikes on bikes, so right near the front. And the banner said, stop giving kids sex hormones, protect lesbian youth. They did a press release, which was not released, <laughs> was not published anywhere. But um, it was on TV slightly because the gay announcers interviewed them for live TV at the parade 
realizing too late what a sensible, protective and pro-lesbian message they were conveying. That was a mistake on their part, they would have thought. And so the next year, some of those same women were in the Lesbian Rights Alliance, Aotearoa, which was young lesbian activists. Um, they had applied for some space at the Pride Festival in Wellington, and they'd had it cancelled. They complained to the Human Rights Commission, but were told by the staff there that anyone can be a lesbian. And that was in 2019. So Rainbow had become all about trans at that stage. So the next year, the young ones called a secret Pride for Lesbians meeting during Pride Week to let us older lesbians know what was happening. And that's why um, when lava rejuvenated, been quiet for a while, this rejuvenation was initiated by Marg Kurno, who's the other complainant, complainant for the case that, along with me, uh, that we're taking to the Human Rights Commission. Rainbow advisory groups had got into every government department and were not re representing lesbians or gays. Um, for example, they were saying that lesbianism is same gender, not same sex attraction. And the Human Rights Com Commission had redefined the word woman as had other government departments, including the Ministry for Women, saying, you know, it was anybody who thought they were a woman was a woman. So um, 2021, March, 20, turned into a busy time. Firstly, we had uh, trans rights activists yelling at us when we protested at the Ministry for Women on International Women's Day. We were protesting about their definition of women, anyone. Um, and for example, at that time, when you searched the Ministry for Women's website, there were no results for lesbian, but trans were there. So we protested outside the Ministry for Women and our placard said things like, sex can't be changed, don't trans the gay away, protect women's rights, spaces, safety and statistics, um, don't skew data, biology is a fact, female, female is not a feeling, protect, protect gender nonconformity and our youth. So we had great sensible placards, but nonetheless, little known to us, Two weeks later, those who protested against us there would use that event for why we shouldn't be allowed at the fair run by Wellington Pride. So the next thing that happened in March, um, in the meantime, before this Pride Fair, we protested and leafleted outside a Rainbow Public Service Conference at Parliament. That was the first such conference, I do believe. Then the third thing that happened in March, four days before the fair, we were told that our spot that we had booked at the annual Out in the City Fair in Wellington was no longer available. It was cancelled because they'd heard our views expressed on International Women's Day. And they said that we did not fit with their kaupapa. Uh, kaupapa is principles. We, Lava, assert that men can't be women and lesbians are same-sex attracted, both of which nowadays are political opinions and, and not only reality. Pride claimed that Lava was trans-exclusionary. They reckon that the fair participants should be standing side by side with the most marginalised of the marginalised, including our tran transgender whānau family, and the marginalisation that they face on the daily. So this standing side by side is, of course, exactly what we had done at these lesbian and gay fairs, as they used to be called, over the past 35 years. We, including lesbians, have been there publicly side by side as broadly inclusive, diverse examples of the rainbow communities, even while not agreeing with each other entirely. So after receiving the cancellation email, LAVA requested a meeting to discuss the issue, 
but we received no reply, despite a stated commitment on Wellington Fried's website to having the hard conversations and to give voice and representation to all. Our intention at the Sphere in 2021 had been to, to display a huge map that we'd made showing the Wellington sites of historical, political and social significance to lesbians from the 1950s to the century. It was to inspire, to, we wanted to inspire the newer lesbians. We had done so much in those decades, it was a very busy map. But since we had been barred from the fair, we had a demonstration out the, outside the fair. So on the day of the fair, a dozen LAVA members displayed the map, along with old political posters outside the fair. A noisy counter-protest formed and surrounded us, chanting, pack your shit and go in our faces, right there, and um, displayed signs bearing slogans such as fuck turf cunts. So I was there handing out our media release to people, people entering the fair, and I engaged in conversation with women, um, and I heard that they cannot find lesbian events or groups to join in on, and these were um, newish women. I also talked to one of the trans rights activists, a young bloke, who was shocked to see our te reo, uh, Māori language, posters that lesbian anti-racism groups had made 35 years ago. He thought that we were all racist, as he'd been told at the university, because he talked about that word that starts with I, intersectionality, he was explaining to me what it meant. Um, so this sort of really demonstrated to me that this trans rights activism is obviously not a grassroots movement or otherwise he'd have known about our activism of 30 to 40 years ago. So um, at that demonstration outside the fair, Pride called the police and barred some lesbians from re-entering the premises. These were lesbians who had come out from the fair to support us. It was really noisy, um, stressful, and a very sad day. So we made a complaint to the Human Rights Commission about discrimination under the Human Rights Act. Um, that led to two rounds of mediation, both of which had no resolution, which meant that um, in December 2022, we lodged a complaint with the Human Rights Review Tribunal and we are currently preparing for a hearing which will take place later this year or early next year. We're claiming that um, Pride offered a service and that they unlawfully discriminated against LAVA on the basis of LAVA's political opinions and our sexual orientation, because we're same sex attracted, not same gender attracted. They had said we would make trans people feel unsafe because of Lava's assertion that sex and sexual orientation exclude trans women from being women and lesbians. Yet Pride denies that Lava's opinions are political opinions and claims that Lava's support for known anti-trans activists such as J.K. Rowling and Julie Bindle is evidence of transphobia. So I don't know how many times you have to explain it to them, but they don't get it, or they pretend not to. Pride is claiming that they were right to cancel our booking and that the Human Rights Act allows them to protect trans people from our harmful views. That is, the views that lesbians are women and that women are adult human females. However, our Human Rights Act doesn't mention the trans people or gender. It does mention sex, sexual orientation, including lesbians, and political opinions, which we say our gender critical and sex realist views are. 
A difference between New Zealand and the UK, for example, is that in the UK, philosophical beliefs are protected under the Equality Act. In New Zealand, it is political opinions that are protected. So we have to prove that our gender critical beliefs are political opinions. And many of us feminists already understand that the personal is political. So New Zealand is one of the countries most affected by the negative impacts of gender ideology. We have 10 times more young people on puberty blockers per capita than the UK does, 10 times more. And that is when the CAS, the um, restricting access on the recommendation of the CAS review hadn't even come into effect. So even before that came into effect, we had 10 times more young people on puberty blockers per capita. So if this case is successful, it'll be a turning point internationally, we think. Um, it acknowledged that pride is political and gender ideology is political and we are all entitled to hold a political opinion about it. Uh, we in LAVA are mainly, mainly, but not entirely, but mainly unemployed, staunch lesbians who are speaking for ourselves and for those that can't or won't speak up because of their jobs or because of physical intimidation and threats of being ostracised. And um, we're seeking your support to promote our campaign for awareness and fundraising. We've already managed to raise approximately $10,000, which is an eighth of our target of $80,000, New Zealand dollars, for our estimated legal costs. Mainly, we've got the 10,000 so far, that's 12% of the 88% 80, to go. We've still got 88% 80, to go. But what we've got so far has uh, come from within New Zealand. But our country's population is only 5 million. So we definitely need support from overseas to help pay our legal costs. We don't have long to raise the $70,000, which is still needed, because the two-week hearing is likely to be either late this year or early next year. So now we're fundraising in earnest. So um, our, our website name to find out more and to, to donate is simple to remember, lava.nz. I could repeat this several times in a cult manner, a simple message, lava.nz. Um, I don't know if I've taken up all my time or not. Um, carry on for like a bit, like a couple, two or three more minutes if you want. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's good. That's handy because it'd be quite good to tell you about um, our youth health and our media here. So in the media, our, our most popular news website in New Zealand is called Stuff. And for example, for the four years from 2020 until 2024, only two out of the 102 articles on the subject were questioning gender identity. There was 13 of those 102 were fairly balanced. We've had no coverage of Maya Forstater, and we have had one opinion piece only about the CAS review. So it's pathetic. And people just don't know about it, what's going on, even though it's in every government department. And um, the situation of health, for particularly for youth, is that... Um, we only have one mutilation surgeon in New Zealand, which is good. And that's um, lucky because there's not enough counsellors in New Zealand, apparently, according to the one of the people who pushes puberty blockers. Uh, so um, she uses that not enough counsellors as justification for having to refer young people on to transitioning. 
Um, so in the last few years, since being discriminated, discriminated against by the Out in the City Fair, Lava has been explaining and fighting for better law changes than what we've ended up with. In 2022, um, so, ID 6 came into law, but the Human Rights Act says we can still have single sex services, facilities and sports. So we can still have that. Um, so other factors apart from birth certificates can be taken into consideration for this. It's up to the provider to rely on their own policies to what sex means. And another new law is conversion practices pro prohibition like elsewhere. It's using that Moton Bailey technique, confusing homosexual with transsexuals to their advantage and falling back on homosexual examples to justify unrelated trans situations. Our Human Rights Act has not actually changed. It specifies sex, but the Human Rights Commission says the protection is the same gender, not same sex. Our, um, the Human Rights Commission that we've had over the last few years and who's just left was Professor Paul Hunt. Um, he was at the Yogyakarta discussions in 2006, or maybe anyway, the second one's 2017, as was Professor Wintermoot, who has since said that in those discussions they did not consider the effects on women, nor that fully intact men would be benefited. Um, so Professor Wintermoot, fabulous, he suggested the law could have simply sought to protect people from violence, harassment or discrimination based on gender non-conforming appearance or behaviour which is much like what has been suggested to our Law Commission here earlier this month by groups such as ours. Um, since being banned by the Out in the City, the Pride Fair, a friend and I went in 2023 not to confront but to enjoy it and be present and, as lesbians and support newer lesbians. We were wearing T-shirts, which you won't be able to see, but... Um, uh, without lesbian and proud woman on them. We got supportive responses to the T-shirt from lesbians at the fair, but the people running the fair tried to have us removed. Why? Because they'd been following us around and keeping an eye on us. Then we came upon a display at the Rainbow Human Rights Display by the Human Rights Commission, which invited us to write ideas for discussion on this huge bit of paper. Um, ideas of what we wanted from the Human Rights Commission. So I wrote something about wanting there to be protection on the right for lesbians to meet and the safety of lesbian-only groups so as to feel safe and supported amongst equals. So Pride wanted us to have wanted to have us removed because my note suggested that men are dangerous. And I only know all this because there's a woman from Pride told us when she had hold of the bit of paper that I'd put my message on and said bloatingly, you shouldn't have left that message here. So some for some reason that was meant to be threatening. 